All right, traders, good afternoon. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group, and it is Wednesday, December 2nd. So, wow, another interesting day in the markets. Uh, I would say, you know, this market continues to show momentum and resiliency. Uh, nice comeback from, you know, where we were this morning. A lot of the momentum areas of the market that we've been seeing recent strength in, they continue to kind of, um, you know, see dip buyers come in we'll go over you know for example the clean energy space i think was at one point was down around five percent for the day and um still finished in the red you know down two percent but still you know uh you know up 2.4 percent so um you know i think that right now this environment we're just continuing to see you know dip buyers come in and so forth and and trade and a lot of trading opportunities. So, it, you know, what I'm going to try to cover in this video a little bit is, um, you know, kind of what to watch out for a little bit, you know, to prepare a little bit. You know, my feeling is before I get to the price action, but I've kind of like have this little bit of a feeling that, um, you know, we're due for a little bit of volatility, right? Things have kind of been gravitating higher and so forth. So, it, you know, whether or not, that happens, right? I have to be at a comfort level in terms of, you know, how much risk I have on, uh, because there really there's no like there's no sell signal in the market, right? Normally, like a sell signal, which would be, you know, in terms of looking at price and trend, which is what I tend to look at, is like you know something to the effect of, you know, price starts to kind of um, give you a sense that. Um, you know, we're breaking below a moving average or a moving average crossover, you know, kind of like we saw in the beginning of September. You know, I think there's a lot of lessons to learn from what we saw, you know, from basically from June all the way to the beginning of September. Um, now, is this going to play out exactly like what we saw before? Probably not, but there's probably going to be some similarities, right? A lot of times we see similarities, uh, things that kind of repeat, but it's it's not perfect. Um, so what I would, you know, a couple takeaways from looking at the price action that we saw at the end of August, beginning of September, like the RSI, Relative Strength Index, like this thing got really cooked, right? So, you know, when, when, the, when the market when I say market, like, you know, the S&P, you know, any big average, when it tends to get, the RSI tends to push, you know, above 75 into 80. Like here was another situation, right? So single stocks, this this isn't always the case. Single stocks can say, can stay overbought for a while. But the indices generally, not always, not 100%, nothing is ever 100%. But when we really start to get overbought like that, then I tend to, um, really be mindful of that. Are we there yet? No, we're almost there. You know, the RSI right now is a 60, 68. So that's why I'm kind of feeling like, hey, you know, keep, I keep looking to make sure like I'm not getting over the tips of my skis in terms of risk, right? Um, you know, I, I like what this market is doing on multiple levels. I like the rotation that we're seeing. You know, I think that's very, um, representative of a of uh, of a bull market right when when two days one group rallies and and outperforms really well then they take a break and and another group you know another couple sectors uh, do the heavy lifting um, that's you know that's really what a bull market is so that's kind of what we're seeing for now so some of the things that I would kind of watch out for if we go back to my spreadsheet right is for is for the RSI to get over overbought we're not there yet we're close if we want to if you want to look at the cues um, are the cues overbought you know remember what happened um, back here the cues got to be you know and again this was kind of not ordinary you know what we saw um, a lot of people were calling that they thought it was a blow off top then um, you can't really call it that now with the, with the market higher um, but it's funny how people like to kind of call things you know, have a catchphrase. Uh, yeah, we, we were like about an 82 uh, RSI back there. So what are we now in the queues? 
we are at 66. So we're getting there, right? We're, we're getting there if you use these type of indicators. And if you're a shorter, you know, if you're trading, um, you know, shorter term time, time frames. So just, you know, bear that in mind. And of course, you know, what happened after that time frame once, once the market shifted, right? There's a significant, there, you know, I think this was a decent pullback. At the end of the day, you know, if, again, if you're a long-term investor, this doesn't really phase you that much because, you know, two months later, we're higher than, you know, much, much higher than where we were in the lows of September and, and the lows of October as well. So, you know, it, it does depend on, upon what your time frame is and how you're trading, right? Um, I know a lot of you uh, who watch this video, some trade short-term options, right? That's, you know, or... or um, intermediate term options like going going out a few months right so that's you know if you're in that camp you know or if you're swing trading stock you know manage a portfolio of stock that you're trading you know medium term then yeah you want to kind of pay attention I think to, to when the market uh, you know gets overbought right so let's go back to a couple other things that I think are a little bit interesting for the day and again risk disclaimer you know everything that we're going over is for information purposes I, purposes I'm not giving you any advice or recommendations this is all you know basically how I'm trading the market right and um yeah, so the other thing that's a little bit, I mean, the VIX wasn't up that much, but it did finish up 1.9%. Generally, again, because again, nothing is 100% of the time, but we don't like to see the VIX, I, I, don't, I don't like to see the VIX go up with the market up. So um, what I would be a little bit more, you know, so let's, let's look at the VIX for a minute. Right, and let's see if we can see some some warning signals uh, that we saw back at the end of August and going into September. Remember how this started to work. Now, so again, I don't think this is significant enough, being the VIX is up one percent. What I would be mindful is if this gave a really good warning signal, right? We started to kind of gravitate higher when the market was still going up, right? So that's. Uh, in my opinion, uh, you know, a divergence, right? So it's not there yet. If we start to see this, now remember, 9.3 was the day when we spilled, right? So up to here, right, which was 9.2, we did see a move from basically kind of where the VIX is now um, to about, you know, about 24.25. So if that happens in the next couple, few days, right, that should give you a little bit of a hint that you may, that, you know, again, it's uh, you know I'm not telling you what to do, but I will be lightening up on my portfolio a little a little bit more if I start to see the VIX go up and um, you know without the market get going down, right? Again, normally when the VIX goes up, um, the market is going down. So if we see the VIX go higher and the market is still going higher, you know that for me is a divergence. So that's kind of what I what I'm watching is. Um, so I put market continues to show momentum, resiliency, what to watch for. So really, you know, divergences, right? So what I just described is what I'm watching in the VIX. And why is this font so small? There we go. Divergences. Let's put that in red. Um, so that's kind of, you know, so these are the things like, of course, like price and trend are number one for me. Right. We talk a lot about this in the member macro videos on uh, Sunday, right? Um, every weekend for Tribeca Trade Trade Group members, I send out two videos. One's a macro video, kind of my my overall market feel, you know, looking at what I call above the hood price and trend, and below the hood at the indicators and some observances like I'm talking about in the VIX. Um, so just kind of setting things up a little bit for what to be mindful of. And then of course, like other things like, um, you know, the advanced decline line. Uh, why can't I, here we go. The advanced decline line for NICE, right? For all stocks. So remember, let's go back to here. You know, right now this looks pretty good, right? Breaking out, you know, a little bit of a move back is fine. What you want to be mindful is of if you start to see a breakdown. So let's go back to where we were in August. Now, August 15th, so, you know, you could put SPY in here too. It's a kind of, ugh. 
<laughs> uh, let's nor let's hit normalize on this. Uh, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Normalize. Um, why does this look so bad? No, don't want that. All right. Well, anyway, um, I think you'll kind of be able to see. So again, this is the advanced decline line. This should not be, sorry, this is a setting that I would need to fix. But basically, um, going back to September, this advanced decline line, while the market was breaking out, they were not confirming one another. Um, I believe uh, Helene Meisler went over this too in her column um, that she has, that she puts out daily. But, um, you know, I, I like, you know, very much of a, a I'm a fan of the um, information that she puts out on Twitter. But um, so when the market was doing this at the end of August, beginning of September, making a peak, the advanced decline line, which is in white, was not doing the same thing. So again, that's called the divergence, right? We're seeing that to a little extent. I think it's too early yet to, to see if this, right? If it starts to really start to trend down a little bit, then, then you've got something, uh, then I think there's, there's something to worry about. So this is what I would be wa watching for. Um, and, you know, a couple other factors, you know, the other thing that has me, the reason why I'm kind of talking about this type of thing is, um, I believe she mentioned this as well. So again, I'm, I'm borrowing a little bit from one or one or two of her bullet points that I read. Um, but when you look at the put call ratio too, notice how low this thing is is getting, right? So that's a lot of people don't like. To, some people like the put call ratio. Other people don't because there's too many false signals in the put call in the equity put call ratio. It kind of gives me a bearing of saying, hey, are people worried at all about the market? Is it complacent? Is there a lot of complacency? And I think what this will tell you is that, yes, there's a lot of complacency in the market right now, right? Um, you know, dips are being bought, um, right? And, the you know, the one thing why, why I'm doing this analysis now, too, is because the market's kind of calm, right? We want to plan ahead a little bit so that we're not caught off guard if we do get a little bit of market volatility. Because we know, right? Over time, the market just doesn't go up in a straight line. It ebbs and it flows, and it is so. So eventually, you know that we're going to get some market volatility, some market dip, right? And we try, I I try, to kind of be a little bit more prepared for that. Now, of course, you could always put on a little bit of a hedge too. Um, you could buy some spy puts. Uh, you know, the issue with that is is that if the market continues to grind higher. You know, you'll lose money on your on a little bit of your hedge. The other question is, how much do you hedge? Too, do you hedge? You know, uh, I never hedge a hundred percent of my portfolio. Um, you know, but do you want to hedge maybe twenty percent? You know, something like that. It depends. Um, the other thing, so at this point, I'm going to go through and we'll talk about some single stock setups. But, you know, I I would love if this market continues to kind of do what it what it does um, right now, because it's kind of it's a lot of fun, um, you know, in terms of the setups that we're seeing. So, for example, like I'll, I'll talk about one trade that we did last week, right? This um, digital turbine apps, right? Um, this was really, this was a nice trade. This is a trade that I put on Friday, you know, spiked up huge, you know, and I made sure that I took plenty of targets. I took off about 85% of this trade. Now look where it is, right? It's back in here. So, you know, I could, of course, add back to that position. Notice it's at that support of $40, right? Which is the top of value for the week, right? So that's what's really nice about this market. If you're being somewhat you know, fluid in saying, you know, selling the rips a little bit and then, you know, coming back and to some of these names that, that I think are, um, you know, making some small dips and uptrends. I think um, it's quite, you know, a fun market to trade right now. Same thing with this Cloudflare, right? This was another name from last week that we put on and, um, you know, took profits in this thing. And look, it's, you know, it's back into some support and holding support. So, for now, 
um, you know, this stuff looks pretty good. So again, it's good to kind of start with, with the, the overall indices, what they're doing, if they're showing any warning signals, and then kind of drill down. And of course, I trade single stocks, right? So um, it's a good exercise to do every day, you know, for at least five or 10 minutes, um, you know, looking at where these things went to, you know, notice we held value for the S&P in the overnight session. We kind of came in and tested a little bit. So the other thing that's kind of nice is I, I would rather have us, right, we go back to this daily chart. Instead of doing this right, and getting way overbought, I would rather have us grind up for as long as this market wants to. And I will try um, my best until I see those divergences to kind of stay in this market. Um, again, being mindful, not getting, you know, too deep into, into positions and having too many positions on. So it's too difficult to manage if we do get that dip, uh, because sometimes we don't get the warning signal, right? That's why I said, you know, not everything is a hundred percent of the time. Sometimes we can get a market dip when, when we don't really get too many warning signals, right? So you, so you have to be mindful of your risk. Remember great traders, you know, historically, are always worried about the risk versus the return, right? You're always worried about that. Um, you know, newer traders, they're concerned about how much money they can make, right? But guys like Paul Tudor Jones, um, guys who have been around for a long time are always concerned about, you know, what's his one thing that he says all the time? I, I always think that every position I have on is wrong, right? He's an exceptional risk manager, all right? So the diff big difference, all right? Um, so a couple other things that I'm watching for the day. Um, I think not net, sorry. Um, SE is getting pretty close, right? We're very close to a, to a breakout in SE. It does have to get above 184. We didn't close there. Um, we're, so we're, we're close. I actually pre-positioned a little bit in this one. Um, I've been long stock, um, after I kind of reduced the position a bit. But I'm still on stock, and, and I bought a little bit of calls in this one. And um, I sent out a video to two, two member videos on um, a couple setups. One in TSM, which we keep seeing uh, call buying in. So I discussed a trade setup in that one. As well as, you know, it's a name that, we, that we're seeing a lot of call buying in. Um, as well as, uh, what else? Um, TDOC, which is not really doing much yet, but I like the spot that TDOC is in. So again, more details in the member videos, but um, just a couple uh, things that we uh, discussed today. Whoops. All right, guys. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great night and uh, much more to follow tomorrow. Again, if you're not a member of uh, Tribeca Trade Group, um, you know, one of the things that we talked about today was, you know, how many basic questions I'm seeing on Twitter. Um, you know, if this is if this is you, if you're newer to trading, um, one of the things I would say, you know, we do a lot of education at the Tribeca Trade Group. If you go in and if you look at our schedule, what we do, um, you know, every Monday and Wednesday, I have Q and A for members. So any any type of questions, whether it's on, you know, I got a couple of questions on like what's a secondary, like what you know, because we're we're seeing obviously a lot of names, and in the in the in the um, EV space, right? We're seeing a lot of names have, have secondary offerings. Um, I got a bunch of questions about that. So like if you're newer to trading and you and you don't know all of these things and the mechanics and how they work, um, I would say, you know, invest, invest in a little bit of education um, and join Tribeca Trade Group, see how it works for you. Uh, because we do have those Monday and Wednesday, like, you know, open Q&A sessions. And I give my market rant. And then, of course, you know, I try to answer as many questions as possible. And then I give education all weekend with the, um, you know, with the member videos, right? And and also, you know, we, we're busy. <laughs> we do um, pre-market sessions too. So we kind of go over setups and, and um, you know, what I'm looking for for, for the day, um, which we caught a couple nice trades. Uh, Snap was a nice one, right? Where's my, um, where's the trade blotter? Sorry. But um, Netflix, you know, I, I, my plan for the for today, which I kind of set up in the pre-market session, was to do a bit more day trading today. 
Um, but like I said, I'm still seeing you know decent setups. So um, Netflix, um, Snap closed on the absolute highs. So you know, like I said, there continues to be um, good-looking setups out there. So um, you know, we'll continue to kind of um, you know trade this way until I see you know some definitive uh, signals that are telling me otherwise. All right, guys, have a great night. See you tomorrow.